Okay, next let's talk, to, talk about projected coordinate systems. And one reason for map projections, there's a, um, it, you know, it's not just to make a maps flat for practical purposes, but it's because we, it allows us to use ge the geometry. So once we make a map flat, we can turn it into some type of a Cartesian coordinate system with X and a Y that we can use to do a lot of the math of geometry, like measuring links and areas and so on. And we do this again using what are called map projections, different methods of displaying um, to convert um, latitude and longitude, which are angular or spherical coordinates to a flat surface, which would be more of a plane coordinates. And uh, like we've said, there's, there's multiple ways to do it. Each have trade-offs because there's no perfect way to do it. Um, you're gonna distort size or shape, direction or distance with the different ones. And they all have different trade-offs, but um, instead of going over all of them, what I'd like to do is just talk about them in general and then talk about some of the more practical aspects of using different coordinate systems. Um, so why do we want to do this? Uh, for convenience of having, rather than displaying a globe, we can display a flat map, but also for mathematical purposes, we can use kind of a fake coordinate system by using latitude and longitude and decimal degrees that we discussed in the last clip. Um, and, but that has, there are some limitations on that. It is a way to display it, but um, it's a bit distorted because latitude and longitude is not a true X and Y coordinate system, but it is one option. Um, but more often we use what's called a projected coordinate system that's based on a map projection where the X and the Y are on the same scale. And well, whichever one we do, they also reference something called the datum. We'll come back, we'll circle back to that one that's a little more complex. Um, but usually there's about three that, I'm, from my experience working here in California and or in the United States in general, there's only three that we really need to kind of know about. So I'll go over those briefly. So here, this is a uh, court system that's NAD 27, which means North American datum of 1927. And the coordinate system is called California Teal Albers and the units are meters. And we'll describe some of the more common ones that we use in California. All right, so again, these are X and Y coordinates like in geometry. These are some examples of different ones. If we, um, and I'm using an example for Turlock, California because I had prepared a comparison for a different class before when I taught in Turlock. So in decimal degrees, the location of Turlock, California can be described as 37.495 degrees north and 120.845 degrees west. And actually, I should note, though, um, one thing that I, I did wrong here, and it's just kind of a good thing to note, is I did the latitude and longitude. But in, in, in reality, the longitude, the east-west, would be the x, and the latitude would be the y. So I should actually reverse these. I was tempted to stop the video and, and fix it. But it's good that I made this mistake and identified it, because sometimes if you're importing data, and it does, and it comes out in really strange places. It's because you need to check which one is the x, which one is the y. So in geometry, you have the x first, and then the y second. In these other ones, these are x and y coordinates. Um, there's some called UTM, which are common universal transverse mercator. It's a very common worldwide system that divides the world into different zones. In California, we have two different zones, zone 10. This would be the coordinates for Turlock, California. If we use the other zone, which Turlock doesn't happen to be in, but we, we sort of kind of faked it into that zone, it would have a different set of coordinates. Note that these numbers are much bigger because they are in meters. 
And this one in particular, this is like 4 million something. It's a really big number because it's meters actually from the equator. Uh, there's some other systems. There's one that's you know, used for um, specifically for the state of California um, that's used to um, kind of as a, a map projection that's um, applies well to the state as a whole called California Albers Equal Area. There's another system that's more specific to counties called State Plain. And these are all different examples of X and Y coordinates that describe the same place, but using different reference systems, different map projections. So just some more practical things, ones you're likely to encounter um, we can have geographic latitude and longitude. And again, these should be actually switched around because the X would be 120 degrees west and the Y would be 37 something degrees north. Now, if you use that for your map, note that the state of California here looks kind of wonky. It looks really too wide here at the top and a little skinnier at the bottom because, because the longitude will um, converge near the poles. If you kind of try to flatten that out, it really stretches the coordinate system, um, especially the farther north you get. So this isn't a good one for analysis, but it is a good one just to use um, to be able to um, reference locations with latitude and longitude. And then those can be converted on the fly in a GIS system to be placed on a map. talk about UTM coordinates for a moment. This stands for Universal Transverse Mercator Projection. And here the, let me kind of jump ahead and go back to this. The, the Earth is divided up and it's a coordinate system that's, that's a, it's a commonly used coordinate system. Um, the, it can be used worldwide, but there are local zones that are used. So you have to kind of know which zone is applicable to the area that you're studying. California here is split into two, um, zone 10 and zone 11. You can see that a bit better here. Um, there, zone 10 is kind of like Northern California. Zone 11 would apply more for Southern California. And the way the, this would be sort of zone 11 here, the coordinate system is starts at the equator is, is the kind of the baseline and then a kind of a narrow area in between. So this coordinate would be, you know, 37, 397,000 meters um, east and 4 million something north within this little kind of, what is not, doesn't look like a grid, but it's kind of a, kind of a tall skinny grid. Here's a, few other zones in the in the eastern United States, zone 15, 16, 17, and so on. And these are what coordinates would look like if you're using UTM. Um, for Turlock, which is in Stanislaus County, which is kind of around, um, around here, kind of in this area, it would be in the, the UTM zone 10, which would be kind of on this half of California. The coordinates would look something like 690,000 degrees east and 4 million something degrees north. And not degrees, sorry. These are in meters. So it'd be about 600,000 something meters east and 4 million something meters north. If we picked this other UTM coordinate system, we could still get coordinates, but they would be different. And now you see how between the two, the shape of California is different. Um, this is the, the way California looks in UTM, if you're using UTM zone 10. And if you displayed it using UTM zone 11, it would be kind of off a little bit and have different coordinates for the same location. And again, um, if you have some a set of coordinates and you are trying to figure out, well, 
Um, you didn't know what they were, and you're trying to make a, an educated guess. One thing to look for is if you have a really large Y coordinate, if it's in the millions, that's probably a good indication that this is a UTM coordinate because UTM coordinates, one characteristic is that they have huge um, values because you're measuring meters from the equator. A state plane is another coordinate that's more for local. Um, more applicable for very high precise surveys for counties on a counties like scale. Here the zones are different. They're aligned to counties in the United States. This is more kind of a US specific type. So this would be zone four for California, would include Fresno County. However, Madera County would be in the next zone up, zone three. So it's divided by state and then divided by area, you know to smaller areas often um, to capture groups of counties. Here's a closer look at the, for California, we have one, two, three, four, you know, a few different zones. This zone four would be include Fresno County, but Madera County would be um, more in zone three. Uh, so the, again, these are more common for very precise surveys at a county scale. If you're building bridges, let's say, or surveying property, this would be a more applicable coordinate system than this, some of the other ones. Um, one thing about this one is that because it's specific to the US, sometimes they can be in feet instead of meters. So the counties will often use this type of coordinate system, but use feet as the units rather than meters. Um, however, the state of California, the Caltrans in particular, use this system, but they use meters instead of feet. So that's one thing you have to kind of be mindful of. So here, um, this would be the coordinates for Turlock, California, um, but these would be in feet rather than meters. This would be kind of unique to this type of a coordinate system. Now, one last one we'll mention is California Albers Equal Area. Um, this is a, um, often if you look it up in a GIS, it's often called California Teal, Albers Equal Area. The name Teal comes from a, used to be a statewide GIS center, and they're the ones who developed this coordinate system to uh, make a unified coordinate system for um, layers that were specific to California. So this is a very California specific coordinate system, often used with state data. Uh, that data you would get from the state of California. And it solves the problem of UTM because UTM has the two different zones for California. This one doesn't have that. It's all, California all fits within this one coordinate system. But it doesn't really, it doesn't, it's not useful if you're using it to use for like the whole United States. It's more specific to California. So here, and the way they set up this coordinate system is that it has, um, both positive and negative coordinates because there's kind of a you know kind of a line here and a line here and if it's on this side it's negative and you know if it's above a certain area it's negative above a certain area positive and it's in meters all right the, um, so these are just some examples of some coordinates you might run into and you'll also have, when you choose a coordinate system, there's also a datum that goes with it without getting too wonky about it. The, the datum is something, is an assumption about the shape of the earth and different measurements of, because the earth isn't, we're, we're treating the earth as though it is a, a sphere, but it isn't an actual sphere. It, it does have, um, the, the shape is a little bit different than a sphere. And as technology has improved with satellites and so on, we've been able to kind of improve the measurement and the assumptions of the shape of the earth over time. So in practice, you don't have to know all of the math and the nitty gritty, but uh, there are three of them that are commonly used in the United States. There is an older one, the North American datum of 1927, and it's often short and also known as NAD 27. And then there's the more recent, North American datum of 1983, often called NAD 83. And then lastly, there's one 
that is similar to this one called the World Geodic System of 1984 or WGS 84. And that's a worldwide version and it is the um, datum that is often used for GPS. Or it is the datum that is used for GPS, excuse me. Now, why do we have different ones? Um, this the North American one is fits well for North America. In Europe, they would use a different datum. So these are kind of more specific to North America. NAD 27, North American data of 1927, was a standard for many years um, historically, and it is the, the all of the coordinates on USGS topographic maps, the 7.5 minute that we've mentioned in the other video, are going to be referenced, are going to use this datum. So if you were to trace coordinates from an older topographic map, you would need to be mindful that those coordinates are going to be uh, referencing the NAD 27 data that would need to be converted if you want to match them up with newer coordinates. Um, you don't see it used in practice anymore. You just have to be aware of it for older products that, like USGS topographic maps. Um, North American datum of 1983. This is the newer one. And generally, um, usually the difference between NAD 27 and 83 is about, can be up to like um, 100 meters or about the length of a football field. So if you have features that are um, mapped in one datum versus the other, for the same coordinate, um, if they're not transformed so that they're aligned to each other automatically, they can be offset by as much as like a football field. And then the WGS84, um, for practical purposes here in California, if unless you're doing like precise inches surveying, you don't have to really, um, you can kind of interchange these two. You can, um, for, for practical purposes, they're so close, it's you know good enough that if you have NAT83 data and WGS84 data, you don't have to worry about really transforming them. They'll fit fine together. So the one difference is the WGS84 is, is a worldwide standard rather than just a, simply a North American standard. Where you need to really more worry about it is between the old one uh, NAD 27 and NAD 83. These are a couple of charts. Um, it's going to, the difference is going to vary by area. So here along the coast, the difference can be in longitude, east west can be as much as 100 meters. And where the, and then it can be sometimes zero in, in latitude and sometimes as high as, you know, 10 or so. So the difference in latitude isn't much different, but longitude are going to be, you can have quite a spread. Now, why know all this, right? Like, what is, what, what's my point? The reason why I'm trying to teach you some of these things is are to help you diagnose things in practice. So if you are working with GIS data and you see some issues, um, learning about datums and different kinds of coordinate systems, will help you kind of understand them enough to do some troubleshooting. So for example, you find that you have data that is offset from where it should be by about a hundred meters on something on that order. Um, the, the map, you know, the GIS has the point here and your, um, your data has the point about a hundred meters away. They're supposed to be at the same place. Why aren't they in the same place? Check the datum because it may be that you need to, um, adjust the data the data from one datum to the other so that they align together. Now, on the other hand, if your data appears, you know, it, it, it appears to be at the right scale, you know, the right shape and everything, but it's offset by thousands of miles. It's, it's often, you know, some other um, part of the country, then the coordinate system is what you need to check. It may be that um, the coordinate system that is being, um, assumed for that data is wrong and it may be the data is actually in a different coordinate system. So it's being placed way off somewhere, some strange part of the world on the map. On the other hand, let's say you have data that 
is appearing in a weird place and also appears too small, about a third of the size of what it should be, or on the other hand, appears three times the size of what it should be, then what you, have, what you may suspect there is that you have the wrong map units, that maybe the, the map is displaying things in feet, but the data is in meters or vice versa. The map is displaying things in meters and your data is in feet, but it's coded wrong. So it's being either showing as too big or too small. And especially if it's like, cause there are uh, three feet to a meter roughly. So if it's a third of the scale or three times the scale that it, you're suspected should be, check the map units. And lastly, um, if your data is clustered in a tiny area of the map, and let's say you have a worldwide map, and where I've seen this in, in practices where um, I actually had a real case where I was helping a student where they had data that was in decimal degrees, latitude and longitude, but when they displayed it on the map, it was all clustering um, off the coast of Africa. And it turned out that the map they were using was in meters, um, but the data they were using was in decimal degrees. And so um, what the problem was is that instead of being, you know, 36 degrees, it was thinking that it was 36 meters. So it was displaying it right near the origin, which had been near the equator and the prime meridian. It was displaying as like 36 meters north and maybe 120 meters east. So it was clustering right near the origin of the map. So if you look at this, uh, this, this reference map here, if the, if it were in, you know, what it should be doing is it should have been displaying, let's say for, for Fresno, um, we should be displaying as 36 degrees north, about this high, and then a hundred something degrees west. But if let's say this wasn't the, the map wasn't actually in degrees, but it was in meters, then it would be all clustered here near the origin, like off the, the kind of the, the curve of Africa. And if, it, if you see that, then there's a difference between your data and the background map. <clears throat> 